Welcome to Motors and Medicine. On today's uh, episode, I'm going to be discussing uh, diabetes. Um, it is a health condition that uh, many people suffer from, and uh, including a lot of my patients. And uh, I'm just going to be going over a few basics and general information about what it is, um, how to recognize it, what it means for your body, how to manage it and treat it, and uh, so forth. So let's get started. First and foremost, um, diabetes. So let's first, I'm going to give you a general description of there's two types of diabetes. The first is um, type 1 diabetes or insulin dependent diabetes. Used to be called juvenile onset diabetes because it typically was something that you genetically inherited. And um, I'm not going to get into too much detail on type 1 diabetes, but I will say this. Um, in type 1 diabetes, um, you're essentially uh, void of insulin. So your pancreas doesn't make it or makes very little of it. So you can't process sugar. And I'll get more into that in, in just a minute. But uh, what I'm really going to focus on today is type 2 diabetes. Um, and I really can't call it adult onset anymore because nowadays with uh, the typical American diet and the excesses of uh, consumptions of sugar um, and, and, and many things, both food and drink, um, there are children as young as 10 or 11 developing type 2 diabetes now. So it's very crucial that people understand how to manage it, how to prevent it, and so forth. So, um, okay, so what is diabetes? Well, diabetes is a medical condition where you have an excess amount of sugar floating around in your bloodstream. And the simplest way or analogy to describe that is picture your vessels um, that carry blood, like your, your arteries and such, picture them as, say, a river. And in a river, you find a lot of different things that kind of float in that river. Now, if for some reason a lot of, say, earth, mud, sludge, and sediment gets dumped into that river, the river becomes a little bit slower in movement, uh, becomes more viscous, thicker, um, and then it becomes cloudy and, and cl there's no clarity anymore. And it gets harder for water to kind of get to the places where it needs to go. That's kind of what happens in your bloodstream with um, diabetes. So with diabetes, you have an excessive amount of sugar that is floating around in your bloodstream. Now, typically, when we as people consume food, um, our, our body's very basic form of energy um, in the smallest, simplest form is glucose, which is even processed even further down to ATP for our cells to function. Um, but I don't want to get into that. I basically just want to say this, that we need sugar to function from our organs to um, muscles to everything that goes on in our bodies, our brain function, hormones, you name it, everything in our body, every function, every cellular function requires sugar. And the way we get sugars from our diet. Um, now, with our diet, we have to have a way to process that sugar. So whenever you eat food, your body breaks it down and then it takes a trip down into your liver, gets broken down a little bit more. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> and then you need um, a special hormone, if you will, if you want to call it that. And in this case, it's insulin to take that sugar and allow that sugar to enter into the cells from the bloodstream and to do its work within the cells. So when you have a problem like diabetes, you develop an issue with either glucose intolerance or insulin resistance. And they're very similar, but essentially you have an issue with processing sugar, whether it be because the insulin that you have is not working very well, you don't have enough of it, or um, the proteins on your cells that recognize insulin have kind of changed their, their shape a little bit. We call it morphology. But the proteins have kind of shifted their, their shape a little bit and have a harder time allowing insulin to attach itself to the cells which and then, of course, attaches and allows the sugar to enter the cells. So what I'm basically trying to get to is 
when you consume food and you break it down to its basic structure of sugar, you need to have insulin to take that sugar and walk it into the cells. Sugar acts as the key to the, to the locks on the doors of the cells, if you want to think of it that way. Now, um, like I mentioned earlier, the typical American diet, we just consume a lot of sugar and not enough people drink enough water to help dilute the sugar that you consume. And then furthermore, there's just not enough uh, physical exercise going on to use up a lot of the sugar that gets stored in your body. So not only are we getting sugar from the food we eat, but also in our muscles and in our liver, we can store quite a bit of sugar as well. And uh, so our bodies are, are exceptionally good instruments at, at processing sugar and hoarding sugar so that we always have that function because we need that basic function. So when it comes to type two diabetes, we really need to manage things. So if you have been diagnosed with type two diabetes, the best way to manage it from a dietary pers perspective is to focus on eating foods that are low or have a low glycemic index is what we want to call it, but basically just low in processed or refined sugars. And that doesn't mean you can't eat a complex carbohydrate, but you definitely want to watch how many carbohydrates you're consuming. You definitely don't want to be eating too much bread, pizza, rolls, sweets, that kind of stuff if you're a diabetic. However, it doesn't mean you can't do it. You just have to be realistic about how much sugar you're taking in because this sugar needs to be processed. So if you're gonna be processing sugar the right way, you have to give your body the right opportunity to do so. And that means helping to keep your insulin sensitivity as high as possible. And to do that, you need to be consuming the least amount of refined sugars and the least amount of uh, liquefied sugars, if you wanna call it that. Like for example, soda, which I'll just give you a prime example, a soda can. One basic soda can of regular soda, not diet, but regular soda, contains about the equivalent of like 24 teaspoons of sugar, which is outrageous. And most people drink soda like it's going out of style. So it's, it's really not something that you wanna be drinking a lot of if you are a diabetic. Even if you're not a diabetic, it's just not a good idea to drink that much soda. But if you're a diabetic, the key here is to really watch the refined sugars pay really close attention to where your daily sugar levels are. And you know this if you're a diabetic, you're gonna be doing some type of finger stick or some type of glucose monitoring of your sugar levels on a daily basis throughout the day to see where your sugar levels are at. And if you really do wanna control it the best, you're gonna check your sugar levels more frequently. Beyond that, you just wanna stay active. Stay active. Lots of exercise, lots of activity will help you maintain those proper sugar levels. Now. How do we measure sugar? Well, we, we measure it a rough estimate by doing like a finger stick or something like that, figuring out what our, our sugar level is in the bloodstream at that time. It's like a, a, a moment in time. But the best way to measure how your body is processing sugar is through a blood test called an A1C. Now, as a diabetic, you should know what this test means. An A1C is just a simple measure uh, of the average amount of sugar that is carried by your red blood cells. Um, because like I said, every cell needs sugar, even red blood cells. Red blood cells have a turnover rate of about 120 days or so. So typically, if you're a diabetic, it's a good idea to get your blood checked at least three or four times a year, but probably three, at least three times a year um, so that you know where your A1C is. The tighter the A1C is, in other words, the lower the number, a normal A1C for somebody who does not have diabetes sits around five or less. But if you're a diabetic, typically we like to shoot for a goal of about seven or less. Um, and if you're in the sixes, that's fantastic control of your diabetes. Um, but I've had a lot of patients come in for physical exams and their blood sugar is you know, their A1Cs are sitting at eight or nine, even 11. And at those levels, I just don't feel comfortable uh, passing them for the physical exams, especially like say a driver's exam, like a DOT. But I digress. The reality here is that you have to keep your blood sugars monitored very closely if you wanna keep that diabetes under control. Um, now, as far as foods go, there are a lot of foods that you can eat that don't even require insulin 
to be absorbed into your cells. So that, that can help you maintain a good level of glucose and not have a crash because diabetics have a hard time managing sugar because again, their insulin is not working very well. And so you have to obviously take some type of medication to help mitigate excessive amounts of sugar in the, in the bloodstream, but you're also having an issue with just balancing out sugar levels in general. And so when you consume a meal, uh, you might get a really big spike in sugar. And when you get those big spikes in sugar, um, it really makes it hard for your body to balance and manage that, that sugar because you just don't have a very active insulin or uh, you, your insulin's just not working like it should. So here's a couple of things. From a dietary perspective first, try to eat more fruits like apples, berries, um, oranges, things like that. They have high levels of fructose, but fructose is a type of sugar that does not require insulin to um, get broken down and get absorbed um, into the cells. That fructose can actually break down on its own and get it absorbed into the cells without the aid of insulin, um, or very little insulin for that matter. So try to pick a lot of fruits like that to keep you satiated throughout the day. And then of course, as long as you're picking foods that you know you, you understand, there, especially in today's day and age now, you can do a research uh, on Google or anywhere else and find out what's a low glycemic index type of food. And there's a plethora of those foods that still taste good. You don't have to give up and sacrifice the great foods. You just have to watch how much of those foods you eat. Everything has to be done in moderation if you're a diabetic. Now, um, from an exercise standpoint, like I mentioned before, diabetes is well managed um, when you are active because like I mentioned, you have a very huge amount of glucose stored in your muscles and in your liver. And when you do exercise, especially exercise where you're maybe perhaps doing like some high stress exercise, like, like going for a strenuous hike or lifting weights or anything like that, even the high aerobic activity, it's going to deplete your muscles and your liver of that glucose, which is a good thing. Because as long as that happens, you won't get those crazy spikes of sugar in your bloodstream um, when you have not kind of balanced out your glucose for the day with proper meals. So the, the best advice with the diabetic is stay active. Stay active with hiking, with walking, with getting on a treadmill, with getting on a bike, lifting some weights, whatever it is. Even if it's only for 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be surprised how much sugar you'll be able to burn up from those exercises and keep your levels at a much more controllable level. So again, just to kind of, you know, reiterate things, stay active, plenty of water, avoid those sugary drinks, make sure that your A1C is on a good level, a seven or less, you're checking your blood sugars on a regular basis throughout the day, keeping your blood sugar levels, you know, well under 200 if you can, uh, ideally. And then um, try to incorporate more low glycemic index foods into your diet as well as fruits uh, because those fruits that have those sugars don't really require a whole lot of insulin to break down that, those sugar. So you can get your, keep your energy levels up and stay active. And uh, if you do these things, you'll be able to keep much better control of your diabetes. So hopefully this information has helped you guys out. And like always, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. And uh, next time we'll get back into the cars and uh, hopefully uh, do some fun content with that. But uh, again, this is Motors and Medicine signing off. Have a good one. Thanks.